Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be speaking about Abaddon and Dante, two of the greatest Astartes that have ever lived. Dante has lived longer than any other person in the galaxy, bar beyond and dreadnoughts and all that kind of stuff. And Abaddon is of course like the main antagonist, the main bad guy when it comes to 40k. Just to witness these two clashing steel, I think it's going to be something incredible because Dante is basically like sanguinius reborn of course he's not sanguinius himself but he you know he's got the uh, the mask of sanguinius on when people see him they just basically get inspired because he's like sanguinius on the battlefield um he's he he's a master with his weapon he just goes around slaying furiously he's he's a complete and utter badass you know he's he's thoughtful he's um he, he, he puts the lives of his men first. You know, he's not one of these people that uh, just throw his men's lives away and just not care about him. Um, people love him. His chapter loves him. The successor chapters, they look up to Dante. They see him as like a leader as well. Like no one really goes against Dante. He's that wise. You know, he's been through a lot. Everyone respects Dante. And then you have Abaddon. And we all know who Abaddon is. He's been around since the Great Crusades. He's been number two. Well, he's been first captain in the Sons of... Of, uh, Horus slash Luna Wills um, and of course when Horus went traitor he went traitor with him and all that kind of stuff when Horus died Abaddon took over uh, all that kind of stuff so it's kind of setting it up to be like a rematch between Sanguinius and Horus in a way but instead of the big boys it's their sons who are taking over and in a way I think it's I think it's more powerful than Sanguinius and Horus because these two figures have done a lot more than their fathers ever did. And what I mean by that, we'll start with Dante, is that Dante has been the chapter master of the Blood Angels for around 1,200 years. Um, I know he's 1,500 years old, um, but he, he hasn't been a chapter master for, for, for 1,500 years. So he's led the Blood Angels longer than Sanguinius ever did. He's been a part of the Blood Angels longer than Sanguinius ever did. He's led them through more campaigns, more battles, um, looked over them when disasters have uh, you know struck them and nearly wiped them out, brought them back from the ashes, you know, raised raised new scouts, um, raised new armies, sent them off into war and stuff like that. He's done a lot more than Sanguinius ever did. Um, a lot of the successor chapters of the Blood Angels look up to, Sang uh, to um, Dante uh, for inspiration because he's such this stoic, bold, bold leader. He knows what to do when a crisis arises because he's got that experience. He's, he's, he's an absolute savage when it comes to battles well even though he appears as this golden beautiful warrior don't let that like take advantage because this this is like the the an angel of death this this is what the word means is you know they can they 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 can look just beautiful and then snap of a finger and he's just an uh, a beast on the battlefield that would go one-on-one -on -one with anything in the galaxy. There's a book series which has currently been released. Um, one is called Dante, and the second part of that is called The Devastation of Baal. And it follows uh, Dante from uh, a child all the way up to him being a chapter master. And, of course, with The Devastation of Baal, with the Tyranids attacking Baal. Um, I won't ruin it, but at, at the end, um, uh, there's a really good scene uh, between Gilliman and uh, Dante. And... Uh, Dante goes to bow down. He's more, you know, he's like broken all his armors, ripped. He's really, really injured and stuff like that. He's been fighting non-stop, and Gilliman says, "No, no, 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 no. You do not bow to me. You are, you are my equal. You, you will never bow to me ever, ever again. Rise, 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 rise." And um, that's that's how Gilliman sees him. Gilliman doesn't see him as a chapter master. Gilliman sees him as an actual equal and as a primarch to see you as an equal that is a really really big big thing to say because you know this is this is Rebuti Gilliman this this is a primarch this is the emperor's own son if he sees you as his equal he doesn't even see the custodians as equals or anything like that but he sees Dante as his equal and he even, he even makes Dante a, a uh, the region of the Imperium, I think it's called uh, the Nephilius. It's the what happened. There was a great rift that happened when uh, Abaddon uh, exploded Cadia, and uh, it broke the galaxy in two. And Rebute is basically purging in the south sections, and Dante is in command of the north sections. You know, purging the north section. So everything in the north of the Imperium now 
is under Dante's command by Gilliman's orders. So I don't care what chapter you are, uh, what planet you forge or anything like that, you now fall under Dante's command. And then we have Abaddon, and Abaddon, again, has done more than Horace ever did, in my opinion. Um, he he basically reunited all the warring um, war bands, traitor legions, whatever was going on in the Eye of Terror, under one banner. Those who wanted to follow him, those who didn't want to follow him, he destroyed. He just took them out. And that was a feat in itself, because there were some big war bands in there. There were some great leaders in uh, the Eye of Terror. So he is a skilled battlefield leader as well, just like Dante. He knows to ha how to handle situations and crisis and stuff like that. Again, he inspires his men in his own way, and he can lead them to marvelous tasks on the on the battlefield and all that kind of stuff. And there's one thing which I really like about Abaddon, greater than Horus, is that Horus was used by the Chaos Gods, where Abaddon knows that and Abaddon refuses to be used by the chaos gods he he refuses to 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 let them uh, wield his fate and you know he'll carve his own fate he wants he wants to come back into the imperium he wants to go back on you know the the black crusades let's say and you know get back to terror and purge and he has done look at look at the feet at cadia he basically flew uh, uh through a, a black fortress into cadia that exploded cadia's down now the the big uh, uh the rift split across the galaxy and now the great plan of abaddon has come to fruition and he's about to unleash everything now i personally think onto terror now i know in the law we haven't actually had that much information on abaddon since the fall of cadia i'm convinced that gw are holding him back that's why they released magnus and mortarian to give a bit more direction to the story while they're really holding on to the big juicy the big good law story bits to come um for either this year i'm hoping this year fingers crossed maybe something around christmas that'd be pretty awesome or next year uh have a big campaign where abaddon um, is finally on the move and I, i'm hoping that the move is towards terror because this theory uh, which we're going to be start talking about now is uh, of dante and abaddon meeting is abaddon is uh, on terror here uh, and he's in front of the emperor and there's a golden warrior that is in front of the emperor and that is the golden warrior that fights to the death to protect the emperor now this information is not really new i know a lot of people are speaking about who's this golden warrior who stands in front of the emperor a lot of people have said it's a custodian some people have said it's basically rogel dawn coming back and fighting for his father one last time i don't believe that at all um with the new books dante and devastation of bar which i previously mentioned i'll put them up on the screen by the way now if you if you're struggling to find them um the great book series uh, guy Haler is done amazing with the blood angels definitely go and re uh, read them uh, in these books it makes it plain sight for me that it's got to be dante that fights Abaddon, no one else but Dante and Abaddon. In the book Dante, um, there's uh, something called the Scrolls of Sanguinius, and it's basically um, what the Primarch Sanguinius wrote when he had his visions, and one of the visions uh, was that there's going to be a, a great br battle that will uh, overshadow all other battles. Now, a lot of people took this for the Horus heresy and stuff like that, and uh, the vision was predicted... Um, right before the death is of, of Horus, and again, this 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 led into people thought, oh, he must have been speaking about his death in um, in front of Horus because it you know it mentioned uh, a golden warrior that would ultimately stand between uh, the emperor uh, of mankind and his destruction. Um, but for me, that's really a different vision because you know Sanguinius was the first to meet. Uh, Horus, um, you know, he the Emperor wasn't there. The Emperor then showed up, and basically the Emperor is the one who did Horus in. Um, you, you could say maybe it is kind of right, because he put the chink in his armor, but we haven't even got that law yet. I don't know if they're going to be changing that or doing anything with that, so I really can't go down that road. Um, but Dante um, believes that that th this vision that Sanguinius saw and put down in, in his scrolls is is him, and, and in a way, Dante doesn't want it to be him he feels like the burden is going to be too strong he's he's like no you know he's, he's really thinking to himself i really don't want this to be me because if it is me what if i let down uh this final task how 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 could then i go and meet my father and say i'm sorry i failed i failed you i failed the emperor um 
uh, in the devastation of Baal, he has this uh, uh, an, another vision, and um, he's there. He's you know he's seeing this golden warrior. He's trying to see his face. He's looking at his face. He's trying to see his face. He can't see his face, um, and he, he notices like you know he's definitely in the throne room because the emperor has his burning. Uh, well, sorry, you know like the emperor's sword across his lap, um, and then he wakes up, and then uh, late, later down he has another vision again. And um, again, it's a, it's the same thing. He's he's trying to see the guy's face, but this time he notices that the sword's not there anymore. And he's like, "Oh, maybe it's not true at all. Then maybe I'm just seeing things because you know there's certain details and stuff missing." Nor does nor does that. What he doesn't know is that Rebooted Gilliman has been revived in that meantime, and Rebooted Gilliman has been there, and he's been given the Emperor's sword, so that vision still does make sense. Um, he's he just doesn't know that Rebooty Gilliman has the Emperor's sword. He, he eventually, he does find out um, at the end of Devastation of Baal when he meets Gilliman and he sees Gilliman with the Emperor's sword, and he's like, "Oh right, so that's where the sword went." And so the vision was right. There's another huge, massive clue as well, and this this one was quite sad when I actually like was uh, listening to this. It was really, really saddening. I was like, I was, I was, I'm I'm not afraid to say it. I was kind of. Um, um, uh, uh, what's the probably like the word uh, tear, tear, tearing up a bit and um, at, the, at the end of Devastation of Baal um, Dante is basically lying more or less dead he's took on like the, this big massive I think it was a, a, a hive lord um, and he's killed it um, but he's wounded and stuff he's like been pierced through his armor and stuff like that and he's he's basically fading out and um, he sees Sanguinius Sanguinius is there and he's like, Father, Father, I've done, my, I've done my duty and stuff like that. And Sanguinis is, comes to him and says, No, my son, you have not. You, you basically got uh, one last great task to do before you can have your uh, eternal sleep. And Dante's like, No, no, please, please, no, please, don't send me back. I've done enough. I've done enough. I've spent so many years doing this. Please let me rest. Let me be with you. Please, please, please. And Sanguinis is like, no, my son, you you must return. You must do this one last task. And it was really quite emotional. And of course, the task he's speaking of, for me personally, is going to be this final showdown uh, with Abaddon. Now, the probably main question is, is that how is Abaddon going to get to Terra? Um, because Terra is probably the most fortified planet in the galaxy, especially now that the Primaris is in like full strength, Reboot is back. Why is Reboot not there defending the Emperor? I think there's more questions than answers on this subject. Um, I'm not sure if this is like a kind of an end times scenario. I don't think GW will ever go to the end times with 40k. I think I think they only went end times for fantasy because it wasn't making enough money, and GW is still. You know, like the number one product. Like I think Age of Sigma only makes up like 25 to 30 percent of the sales uh, the, the, from the chap I was speaking to. Um, so 40k is still definitely um, in the in the main headlight, the main focus uh, for Games Workshop. Um, so I'm I'm wondering if if it's going to be part of like a campaign. But then again, to reach Terra is a feat on its own. And again, that's going to be incredible to see Abaddon do that. Um, I'm just I'm, it's, it's, it's just it's just a wonder. How he's going to break through all the systems and um, take down all the forces. Of course, we've got the great big rift, so that could probably um, uh, go in his favor. But then you, you know, we've got stuff like the Eldar who are really like on our side now, buddy buddies. So we've got their assistance and stuff. Um, I'm thinking maybe it's going to be something like kind of like um, a spearhead attack, where you know a small fleet breaks through and goes right for the jugular. Uh, of the enemy, and when I say juggler, I mean for terror. And you know, they land and they force their way through uh, the walls uh, because most of the custodians now are actually out in the universe. You know, they're not all behind the walls now. So, in that kind of sense, you know, the custodians are not really in full strength manning the palace. Um, so, I can kind of see them breaking through and doing a lot of damage that way. And maybe Dante is near and he's called in, and that's where the duel actually happens. Like I said, there's just so many, there's just so many questions to go along with this topic. It's just, uh, I definitely think it's going to happen. I do definitely think it's going to happen, but I don't know how it's going to happen. There's, 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 there's too much 
being based and talked about it for it not to happen now. Uh, like if if you go and read uh, again, if 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 you go and read Dante, if you go and read Devastation of Baal, it's basically slapping you in the face that uh, Dante and Abaddon are going to have it out in front of the Emperor. Uh, it's just how is that going to happen is going to be the really, really big thing. All right, chaps, that's me done for another video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I've been wanting to make this video for some time because I, I really do think it's going to be something marvellous to witness and behold. These two are absolutely fantastic, great warriors. Um, they're the master of the, you know, the Black Legion and the Blood Angels. Um, like I said, it's basically the Vengeful Spirit Mark II, uh, Sanguinius vs. Horus. And yeah, I just think it's going to be absolutely awesome. Black Legion first Blood Angels, who doesn't want that? Hopefully, they'll both get new models uh, by the time this does happen because the Dante model is not really up to standards um, as of now. And the Abaddon model is definitely needs some love. It, it looks like, yeah, it, it just looks awful compared to some of the new stuff. So hopefully, um, they get some new models uh, by the time this actually happens. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you leave your comments and everything like that. I'd love to know what you think about this theory. Maybe you actually think it's something different. If you've read um, Dante and Devastation of Baal, um, then yeah, just post away and um, give me all the feedback and we'll have a nice healthy discussion on it again thank you uh, and I see you I shall see you all very very soon see you now and bye bye